it's enough food on the table for all of us to eat. If you don't take anything from this video, take this. What a way to start off this video, child. I don't know what happened to my audio, but what's up? My name is Hawa Bunga. If you're new here, welcome. If you're an attorney ninja, welcome back. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And now my audio is about to work again. As you know, I'm a cyber engineer. I'm also a content creator. I'm a YouTuber. I'm all of that. I am the type of girl that loves to put people on game. I want to see more of us in this industry because... We can definitely dominate the industry because we are that girls. You're that girl. I'm that girl. You're that guy. I talk a lot about cybersecurity here on my channel and also on threads, on Instagram, on TikTok. And sometimes I get questions from you all. I also ask y'all to ask me a few questions that I can answer here on my question here on my channel because I get a lot of questions about cybersecurity. I don't wanna give y'all too much at once because it can get overwhelming. So we're just gonna get into answering a few questions. Let me bring y'all in a little bit closer. The first question I'm gonna answer is, how did you start in cybersecurity and as a cyber engineer? Well, since you asked, I'll give you a little backstory. I actually, most of my career getting out of college, I was in a lot of customer service based roles. I worked in a hotel, I worked in property management. I really love and enjoy property management. As far as the process and stuff, hence why I'm building my own property management company right now. And I do have one property with my husband and we are looking to build our portfolio. So I still really love property management. But if you know me, I am that type of person that I'm not really a people's person. I'm not really very bubbly and have a whole bunch of personality. So throughout my career working in customer service based positions, I was always acting. I always, when I'm going into work, had to put on a different hat. I had to turn into a different person because that wasn't me. Though I really enjoy making like customers and stuff happy, I just wasn't that happy because it wasn't my thing. And then also I was always in a situation with somebody in the workplace, usually women or white men. You know, just to be I'm being honest, it was always something. In the very last role that I was in before I transitioned over into IT, I will always be finding myself stressed, crying. If you don't know, I have sickle cell. So working in those environments always triggered me to get sick and I will always end up in the hospital. Whereas now I'm getting less sick because I'm less stressed and I'm not dealing with all of those issues. My husband has been working in IT, specifically cybersecurity, for years, so for a really long time. And he kept telling me, you know, you're so smart. You can do this. You need to get into cybersecurity. I think you'll love it. And I'll be like, no, no, no. I really like being out and about. I like being in the office, even though I don't really like people. I like being around people. I feel like cybersecurity, IT would be so boring. And so y'all, I have my last straw. I have my last straw at my job. I quit my job and I started studying IT. I took classes, I did internships, I interned with my husband. He put me on some of his projects. I work as he is also a contractor, also in the works of building our own IT staffing and consultant agency. So he was working a lot on that and other stuff. So he did me helps on my projects. So I got that hands-on experience through that, doing a lot of networking with other people that was in the industry. And I started to think, oh yes, I really can do this. This is T. And then I redid my entire resume just based on the classes I took and the internships I did. And I started applying to jobs and I started interviewing. I went on a few interviews before I actually landed my first contracting uh, position with the government. I talked a lot more details about my role and how I really got into this position in this video here that's already on my channel. So if you want more information and details about that, definitely check out that video. Question number two that I receive a lot is what certs certifications do I have? I have my Comp TIA Security Plus as well as my CISA and I'm working towards my CIS, which is 
C-I-S-S-P. <laughs> Those are the certifications that I specifically have. And for my role that I'm in currently, they only require a, a security plus for me to be in this position. So question number three, we're moving along here. What certifications do I need to be a cyber engineer? I get this question a lot as well. So let me put you on game right quick. So to become a cyber engineer, the certifications you need depend on specific role, industry, and career goals, but there's several widely recognized ones that can help you break into or advance in the field. Here's a rundown of some key certifications that you'll hear like most cyber security people, people talk about. You see me looking down, um, looking at my notes because I wrote notes because I'm not a machine. I'm a cyber chick, but I'm not a machine. So the first one is the Comp TIA Security Plus. This is great starter point for beginners. It covers foundational cybersecurity concepts like network security, threats, and risk management. It's vendor neutral. It's often the search that you will need for any type of entry level role. Because of this industry is in high demand and they're looking for people, sometimes they're like, we don't care. As long as you got this one, come on board. We're going to teach you. We're going to help you get your search because a lot of these positions, so they will help you get more search. So CEH, which is the Certified Ethical Hacker Cert. This cert focuses on penetration testing and understanding how hackers think. This is an awesome role if you like, want to get down in the gritty. If you, babes, if you a hacker, you know what I'm saying? This is a good role for you because you already know how to hack. It's a practical and very hands-on certification teaching you how to identify vulnerabilities by stimulating attack. Um, don't be out here scamming. Another one, which is the one I said that I was working on, is the CISSP Certified Information System Professional. This one is a search that I feel like everybody in IT or cybersecurity goal should be eventually to have because if you have this, you could pretty much get almost any role. This one is a good standard for a more experienced professional. It's broad, covering security architecture, risk management, and more. You need at least five years of paid work experience in the field to qualify for this though. So keep that in mind. Hence, while like, are you in a position, say you're only year two or three in a position, this is the time where you need to start studying for the certification so that when that time comes for you to take it, it'll be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's what I'm doing, y'all. Another one is the Security Plus Anal Analyst. That's the CYSA. This one bridges the gap between Security Plus and Advanced Certs. It focuses on threat detections, analysts, and response. Skilled cyber engineer use this. This is the other one that I have. If you are an analyst or, or if you're an assessor, this is a very good cert to have. It'll get you in a lot of key roles you need and you'll want for your career. That's why I mentioned that the certs and that you inquire, it depends on the type of position that you want to be in. You don't want to just go and start getting certs and then apply for a position where you don't need that cert, you need this cert. You get what I mean? You want to be very intentional about the certifications that you get. Another certification that you could think about getting is GIAC and the GC, the GSEC. Those are like very technical roles, the engineering roles, the ISS. So roles, the system steward roles. This is a certification that is really respected in the industry. It's a solid entry to mid-level cert security essential. GPEN dives penetration testing, they're pricey, um, just to let you know. But they carry a lot of weight. Sometimes, like, I'll get questions like people will be on threads, like, hey, can you teach me how to get in this role? Can you tell me how to get in this role? You have to invest. Like when I tell people, hey, take this class, take this course or whatever, so that you could get the role that you want. They don't want to hear it. They want me to teach you them. I can't teach you everything you need to know. If you want to be making $200,000 a year, girl, pay that $2,000 to take that class. Pay the money. <laughs> it's worth it. You spend $2,000 on a bag. You spend $2,000 to go on a trip. Spend that $2,000 get some information that you need that will help you make a lot of money in the long run. The Cisco certification on um, cyber ops, if you're leaning towards network security, 
more technical. This focuses on operational security and incident response. It's tied to Cisco systems, but it's still widely applicable. While the other certs that I mentioned before, especially like the first two, get into more positions, whereas this type of cert is a very like specific for specific roles. The last one that I'm going to talk about right now is the, the Offensive Security Certified Professional Cert Girl. This is a tongue twister. Some of these certs be tongue twisters. That's why I go with the acronym OSCP. Yeah, a hard drive hands-on search for penetration testing. You have to hack the networks in 24 hours for your exam. That sounds crazy. <laughs> so it's not for beginners at all. This is something that you want to look at later, later now, okay? I just wanted to give you like a list of certifications you want to start looking into. Let's get into the next question. I wanted to get into cybersecurity, but I wanted to go to a university or a school to get a degree, especially someone who is fresh out of high school. What should they focus on? I would say computer science and or IT. Definitely go to a school that has a really good IT program and especially one that has something where you could actually focus in cybersecurity if that's the route that you want to take. Aubrey, I'm filming. Can't hear myself think. If your university or school that you're looking to go to don't have none of those, a computer science degree will work as well. A question that I get a lot is, which is kind of funny, is like, do I work remote? The people, the girls want to know, are you working from home, babes? Because that's what I'm looking for. I want to be working from home, okay? Uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that do not enjoy working from home. They like being in the office. They like being around people, things like that. So right now, yes, I'm 100% remote. I work from home and I love it. Sometimes I do have to go into the office. If there's certain projects that you're working on or if you're doing an assessment or something like that and you need to go into the office or you need to get an upgrade to your laptop or whatever, sometimes I go into the office is for specific things but for the most part I work remote. Um, this is a question that a lot of people was asking me on th threads. The question is kind of confusing to me because I don't know what aspect you're talking about so they asked me how do you go about getting on track on contract so that question is a very loud outside I don't know what's that question, because I was talking about two different things on threads, I was talking about how we're trying to build IT consultant and staffing company. It sounded like that question was geared towards that. I really don't know the answer to that since we haven't launched our business yet, but I have an idea, but I don't want to get too much into that until I actually start doing it where I can walk you step by step on how to get contracts if that's something that you're looking to do as far as having your own staffing or consulting company for IT and cybersecurity. But if you're saying like, how do you, I get on contracts right now, I'm on a contract for a company and that company is contracted by the government. So I technically don't work for the government. I am a contractor and that contractor works for the government. You, you get what I'm saying. You go on like regular job sites like Indeed, LinkedIn, and you'll put in applications for the private nectars and it will literally say on the application that they have a contract under the US government. If that's something that you're looking to do, which I highly recommend, contracts are better. Some, some of the contracts are W-2 and some of the contracts are 1099. So depending on which way you want to go, you go that way. 1099, no taxes come out, but you pay taxes. And W-2, your taxes come out your paycheck. And then also you get all of the benefits, all of the things. They both have pros and cons. And I like working directly with recruiters. Usually when a job reach out to me, it's, the, it's a recruiter. It's not the actual agency. They use a staffing agency to recruit. Once I get that person's information, I'm keeping it. I'm going to be contacting you. Hey, I want to, what contracts you got open right now? What contracts you got available? That is how you network. I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm already in cybersecurity. I work for this company. I'm looking to move. Do you know anybody? My recruiters are always looking for people to fill positions. So I will connect them. And a lot of times also with the recruiters, this is a bonus tip that if you connect somebody and they get that job, you'll get a bonus. They'll get a bonus and you'll get a bonus. So that's also something that 
happens a lot within this industry that I love is tea. Like when you start applying for jobs, you just gotta look at the job description. And then also when a recruiter reach out to you, make sure you keep their contact information, especially if they do get you positions. You wanna build a great relationship with the recruiters because I'm telling you, listen to what i'm saying and i'm gonna be answering one more question for this video because i don't want it to be too lengthy i don't want you to get overwhelmed if i wanted to switch careers and get into cybersecurity quick asap early what should i do you would take the crash course like a seven week course chill the camera is hating on me ran out of storage how you run out of storage you a brand new sd card anyways Take two. You will want to take a seven week course or something. Seven week course usually goes over the basics of cybersecurity. It usually go over building re resumes, go over how to interview, what type of jobs to look for, all of that. If you wanna quit your job today and start cybersecurity in two months, that's what I highly recommend you do. It does work, but you have to be very committed you have to commit to it and it's scary to go on interviews where it's like, bro, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But babe, I'm telling you, sometimes faking it till you make it work. Because as y'all know, when you start any position, any job, they're going to train you how to do the job. They're going to have templates. They're going to have examples. It's not rocket science. All you need to do is land the job. If you don't take anything from this video, take this all you need to do is land the job doing something that's going to teach you how to land the job if you get what i'm saying do you understand type you understand what i'm saying in the comments if you understand what i'm saying do that girl i'm telling you and i do have a recommendation i actually have a colleague and my husband is teaching a online course. I swear I'm not trying to plug them in. This is not sponsored, they ain't paying me nothing. But I'm telling you, if you wanna to get to where you are trying to go, definitely try it out, definitely look into it. It doesn't hurt, I'm telling you. What I mentioned before, invest in yourself, invest in what you really want and it will all work out for you. So I'm gonna put that information in the description and then also have information right here on the screen. If you wanna take a screenshot, reach out to them and start that. I also have um, other resources that I'll put in my description box as well if you wanna look into, but definitely comment below if you have any other questions. If you, have, if you want me to follow up or something, if you want me to dive deeper into something, Put it below and I'm going to come back and we're going to chat. We're going to talk. We might have a girls night or just a night because I feel like I have guys supporters as well. If you're a guy, tap in. I want to see you. What are you? <laughs> But I hope this video was very helpful for you. I hope it did something for somebody. Even if one person found it helpful, that's a blessing to me. Because like I said, I love putting people on game. And I think a part of my journey and a part of what God put me on this earth to do is to help other people in whichever way I can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. If you made it to the end, comment Cyber Chick and just happen on your real one. I thank y'all so much again for watching my video and I wish you so much success, babes. I want you to win. We all could win, we all could eat. It's enough food on the table for all of us to eat. So catch y'all in the next one. Signing out.